Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number one of this NHL 24 Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode here on my channel. Today we are getting to the you know intro, the setup, and just getting into this franchise mode. It's going to be a rebuild franchise mode to start with, at least for the first five seasons or so probably, because Chicago is not really a team that I see being competitive super soon. It's going to take them a little while to build through the draft. That's mainly what the goal of this series is going to be. And as you can see by the vote here on YouTube, we I asked the question that which other series do you guys want to see that I wanted to do a rebuild series more so than the Montreal series where we're kind of like winning already two seasons in. So the votes came in. There's about 160 of them or so and Chicago came out on top over San Jose and Anaheim. Those two teams would have been interesting too, but I think Chicago is the toughest challenge out of those three. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be good. I did have a lot of comments on this post saying not to do any of these teams and to do something different, but really, this is what we're going to go with. I think this is going to be a, like really quite a challenge as far as rebuilding and just making sure we draft well and doing all those things right, so... Without further ado, let's get into the setup, but starting things off, the first kind of steps we're going to take throughout this first episode is just breaking down our team needs, breaking down the current pieces we have that we are keeping and are guaranteed not moving. That's kind of what this first episode is going to be all about. Obviously, we're going to get scouts set up. We're going to do all that basic stuff, but you know, Chicago is the worst team in the league. As far as actual NHL standings go right now, too, they are dead last, so... Yes, just because you land a generational talent in Connor Bedard does not necessarily mean that your team's going to be good, as proven by the Edmonton Oilers and other teams, as well as remember that Bedard's coming into a team in Chicago where there aren't really a lot of other young, talented, top-end players like Edmonton had. I realize my camera's a little off there. There we go. That's a little better. So, yeah, it's going to be a challenge for Bedard to, you know, not really... Um, not really get too frustrated with the rebuild and to just, you know, go along with the process. These are the settings we're playing with. If you guys have any questions, drop them below as to why I use certain settings, but we're going to go through. I almost, I almost want to put draft class quality on high because that would speed up the rebuild a little bit here, but I don't think we're going to do that. Of course, we are going to be Oh, I actually almost want to go hard trade difficulty too. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go hard trade difficulty just to really make this a true difficult rebuild. That is the goal here. Um, and I think that by putting it on hard, I think that's going to make it a lot more fun. So let's let's go with that. Um, of course, you know, we're going to have to build through the draft um, because there's no way that we're going to be able to build up a crazy good team any other way. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave sim engine shot frequency on high and generate prospect quality on high. Draft class quality and sim engine scoring can stay medium. I think that's what we're going to do for now. I might even bump this down if we get like one or two really crazy drafts. Just be like, okay, this is a little too much. Probably not realistic. So, And we're going to turn morale meetings off because those just get annoying, even though guys are like, oh, I'm in a slump, coach. I'm like, what do you, what do you want me to do about it? You're the player. Deal with it. Right? Like, So um, that is pretty much it for advanced settings. Did we hit quick settings? Yeah, we did. Okay, so... Um, the only other thing I'm going to touch here is gameplay sliders. I'm going to bump these things straight down because we do not want Connor Goddard having like 20 injuries in the 25 seasons this franchise mode lasts. So we're going to bump this down to, let's go 20 and 10 for now. Um, we'll probably bump those even lower on injury occurrence because otherwise, it's not that it's unsimmable. The, the sim is quite fast now, especially I'm on Xbox Series X, so it is quite fast, but at the same time. We don't like having to replace players with injuries consistently. So without further ado, let's jump into the actual franchise mode and then I'll pull up the spreadsheet and we'll get talking about team needs and the team assessment before we actually jump into the true rebuild. All right, guys, so here is the current state or like position of the Chicago Blackhawks. Right now, we're definitely a seller or a rebuilder and really Connor Bedard and Kevin Korchinski are kind of our only two top pieces right now on this team. Everybody else is okay, but nothing special. Um, as you can see there, I have added in guys like Frank Nazer and um, Oliver Moore, a couple of those kind of top and forward prospects. They are creative players. So if you guys are interested in adding those guys to your team, um, 
feel free to pause. You can make these players, and you know the details are pretty pretty basic on these. You can find them on Elite Prospects and things like that. I haven't really released a proper like custom roster yet this year, so that is something I'm working towards here. Um, Ethan Del Master, I did bump up a little on potential. I bumped Kurashev up just like one overall, I think, because he's getting tons of minutes with Bedard. Apart from that, Isaac Phillips too. I also gave a bump. I didn't give him a potential bump, but he does look like he's going to be kind of a top end guy there and Wyatt Kaiser as well. He actually has looked really good so far with the Blackhawks this season. If you guys have watched any games, it's fun to watch just Bernard because he's so good. But apart from that, that's pretty much it for kind of prospect changes I made. I do believe Colton Dock will turn out to be an NHL player at some point too. It's going to take a couple seasons still, but you know we're starting to slowly build the pieces into place for an effective team. It's obviously there's lots missing still, but we've got a couple first round picks here this upcoming year. We might even look to add another one. Maybe we trade Taylor Hall or something. That's always an option. Um, I have added Drew Camesso in here too. Again, I don't know why it keeps saying fully undrafted when I set these guys to be like Chicago goaltenders, but you know, whatever it is what it is. Um, Cause it says, yeah, drafted by undrafted. That's not legit. It should be drafted by not available, but I actually set it to Chicago. So anyways, that's the current situation. So maybe Drew Camesso becomes our um, number one starter here. He's a minor starting goalie currently, and we'll probably be throwing him into the Wolves there. Uh, we'll have Mrazek and Soderblom, or Soderblom, sorry, I always say Soderblom. It's Soderblom because that's how it's pronounced, I guess. Um, I don't understand it. If you guys can explain why it's Soderblom instead of Soderblom, let me know in the comments. But uh, as of right now, I, the one thing I have noticed with Chicago's defense is that it is extremely extremely left-hand dominant. So right-handed defensemen are going to be the key to this rebuild as far as really building out a formidable defensive core in the future. Because you look at guys like, yeah, Korczynski could play the right side because he's offensive. Sure, maybe that's one option. But like, Alex Vlasic's going to be a top four defenseman. He's very solid, very skilled, very, or not very skilled, very big and rangy and hard to play against defensively. Um, so that's one guy already that's like good on the left side. Then we have Ethan Del Mastro, who's looking really good on the left side. Then we have Isaac Phillips. Then we have Nolan Allen. Then we have Wyatt Kaiser. Like there's all left-handed D-men in this Chicago system. So we are going to have to draft a couple righties. Um, I guess I could have bumped Louis Crevier up because he is getting some minutes this year. But like, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's going to stick because he's already 22. And yeah, yeah, Crevier, I'm not so high on in the Chicago system. Some of the Chicago fans are probably going to rip me for that. But that's what I personally believe. Um, Frank Nazer is going to be really good in the future. He'll probably slot into a top six um, role at some point in this team. And then apart from that, the wings are, are quite weak right now. Like we're missing quite a bit on the wing we do like our centers look good and we have a couple guys like i've set bedard to play potentially right wing if needed um but yeah we've also got you know reichel can play the left wing kurashev can play the left wing so that those are some options and then i do think we're gonna have a bedard more one two punch up the middle for the majority of this franchise mode that is the goal anyways we'll see how it actually goes but that is the current status of the team. I'll show you guys my spreadsheet here nice and quickly because that is going to kind of just outline in detail the remaining parts of how I've planned this so far and what we're currently needing still. Here's the current spreadsheet I'm using. You guys can see it. It's pretty, pretty complex. Um, everything is referenced for the most part. So like once you punch in and fill out an entire year's worth of spreadsheet tracking, it all shows up in the overview. So that's what we're gonna be tracking this whole franchise with. But this is the current team layout that I have um, as to where I want to play guys. So as you can see, we do have like one, two, three, four, five, six. So half of our forward group is missing. We're missing a third of our entire defense. So we need two more def right hand defensemen there and we need a goaltender. So here's the team needs list that I've kind of laid out. Um, really, there, there's a lot to go here. So. We need a first line, either power forward, or we could potentially have a two-way forward there. But that is kind of our number one need for this team. Um, following those closely are also, like these are almost all tied for a number one need on this team for these first four. So a first line power forward or two-way forward, yes. A second line sniper would be very nice to go alongside Reichel and more. Um, especially if we can get an elite guy like I'm... 
I'm pretty set on if we can get Malcolm Spence in year two. That would be kind of my ideal player there. Um, as far as defensemen go, I think this first draft, yes, it would be nice to get a guy like Celebrini or maybe like Caden Lindstrom or somebody like that to play in this top role. Um, those are probably the prospects we're going to be looking at. Like, of course, if we win the number one pick, we'll take Celebrini, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a little tricky here at first to just make sure the team is all set up perfectly. So we'll see what happens with that kind of first end, but I'm also very interested in trying to maybe land one of the, there's a couple right-handed D-men coming up in this first draft too. Guys like Artyom Levchinov would be, you know, my ideal kind of offensive defenseman to play a top four role alongside either Vlasic or Korchinski. And then, you know, we need another two-way defenseman, defensive defenseman, who's also elite, um, because if we can build build in three elite D-men into this core of the defensive group, then we're really going to have a chance of actually being competitive. An elite goaltender, of course, we're going to need that, um, but that's probably going to be one of our least worries because def or goaltenders are fairly easy to find elite-wise um, in the drafts compared to other positions. And then, of course, we need you know third-line wingers that are preferably like top six potential to play alongside Kurashev here. And then, of course, um, a couple top nine forwards um, in the grinder group here to grinders, two-way forwards, power forwards to play on that bottom line. So that's kind of our last need there. Apart from that, you know, just more depth would probably be good too. But this is what we're currently looking at for the team. And yeah, it's going to be a grind to cover those team needs. But hopefully we can, we can cover one or two of those needs in this first episode here. So let's flip back over to the Xbox and get going with the scout setup and everything. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I am actually going to go and throw a couple players here, guys like Jones, um, like Seth Jones, Taylor Hall, and maybe like, uh, who else would we want to go for here? Maybe like Jason Dickinson, put all of those guys on the uh, trade block just because, you know, I think we will get some decent trade offers for those players, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge. Fortunately with Chicago, the one like really big advantage we have is Chicago is a big market. They are one of the largest markets um, in the NHL, which means our budget is absolutely amazing. We can like max out scout salaries. We'll have additional money um, compared to other teams. Like you look at our coaching budget, we have nearly $8 million for a coaching budget. Some coaching budgets in this game are like $4 million four and a half million and Chicago's got eight. So we are going to be able to get good coaches eventually. Um, obviously that's going to have to fit with a Bedard Korchinski kind of scheme fit here in Chicago because that is what we are building out. But apart from that, you know, we will name Bedard captain probably in season two, but at the moment, just three A's for now on Foligno, uh, Murphy and Jones, I think are, is the best setup and best fit for this team at the moment. Um, obviously you don't want to put all the responsibility on the 18 year old just let him you know feel his way into the league and see how he does so that is what we're doing as of right now um i will get to line set up in just a minute but first things first we're going to go through the scouts because the scouts are going to be expensive and difficult to manage because we are mainly going to be going with um amateur scouts here the scouts are almost set up at this point now we've relocated like most of our scouts we've hired on one or two um that will take a couple days here to just show up but that is fine by me um, and we will start to get into the preseason here i'm not gonna go like game by game holy bedard that's quite a preseason start two goals in his first game and we win in overtime against colorado not bad we got a woodpecker pecking them in the wall of my office right now that's lovely okay um also i didn't actually look at the draft to see is there no there is not a player above celebrini or iserman so if you guys haven't seen any of my other videos celebrini and iserman usually tend to be high elite players on this roster of mine so yeah that's always interesting but this guy Corey brooks could be a decent right-handed d-man too so there's options there or you know even zane Perrick we could look at potentially get or like Adam Jurasek there's there's options there's definitely quite a few options for where we could go with just scouting and drafting players and Emil Vini 
could be a elite goalie. Um, I think, or I did bump his potential before this franchise mode started because um, he was like fringe starter on the base rosters, which makes no sense when he's like the top goalie prospect um, for this upcoming draft. But there is also a guy named Kenneth Muzzin there, so like there's there's a couple options um, for who we could pursue. But I think mainly in this first year, as long as we focus on like look at how far down Caden Lindstrom is, he's tenth. We could potentially snag, like, if we manage to pick up one more first-round pick and we either get Levshinov or, like, one of these other top three kind of positions. Like, Levshinov, I'd probably take third, but we could potentially fill a bunch of our needs and roles in this first draft. Like, yeah, it's it might be some trading up and trading away other pieces that are good, but I think we could do it. Like, I honestly, genuinely think we could pull... A great first draft here and really set this team on the right path but let's um i think we got all our scouts there i might just have to reassign one or two location wise but apart from that i think we're almost ready to go here for starting our scouting which is awesome because scouting is quite a process it is quite a lengthy kind of um review of just making sure that everybody's in the right spot that we're scouting as many prospects as physically possible and that we don't really miss on too many guys because that is always a an issue that these systems can face if you don't set them up right so it looks like we might actually be short one liga player or liga scout um looks like we got one scout traveling too i thought i hired enough to cover everything so maybe we're missing one scout but Really, I'm just gonna start scouting away here. It's it's a boring process off the, or pretty much in general. So uh, yeah, the first thing we're gonna do here is just get rolling on scouting some players. So wow, it always blows my mind how many prospects are in the like OHL, QMJHL, and like that range in the first like season or two. There's just so many. Like look at this, we're like almost 15 scouts or 15 prospects in, and we're like already hitting the date that. I've said, if you guys haven't watched my scouting video or my scouting tutorial on how to get as many full bar scouting reports as possible in this game, um, then go and watch that. I'll link it up in this top description corner right now. Um, I would recommend you highly, or I would highly recommend you go watch that if you play NHL franchise mode and want to get good scouting reports and build a good team and prospect pool consistently, because that is the way to go. Um, but yeah, I, I would highly recommend watching that if you haven't yet, and I'm sure other other viewers will vote for that in the comments as well. So yeah, let me know if you guys enjoy that one, but we're almost done the scouting here now. Um, just a few more kind of quick little click throughs and reports to finish up, and then we will be heading on to even more of these. This is going to be a lot of the off-screen time in this series, is just making sure players are scouted properly because as you can see, we're only down to like pick what, 125 in the WHL and there's still so many more prospects to go. So yeah, yeah the scouting is always a fun time trying to balance out your um, staff perfectly. It's, it is a tricky go, but as you can see, we're starting off with a full play style scouting report. Then we'll do strengths and weaknesses and skills assessment, then two rounds of potential comparison. And that's really how our entire system is going to work here. So. Um, looks like Bedard got put in the right spot to start, which is good. He should be playing on the first line. Um, the only thing I think we might do, I think we'll stick to somewhat of the actual timeline here in Chicago Blackhawks uh, memory as far as we will eventually scratch Corey Perry. It will only take you know a couple weeks and then that'll be the play. Um, we can even get a plus three there. That's interesting. Okay, let's do that. And then who else can we kind of throw around here? Put Felino in there. I kind of want Reichel playing further up, but like, that's probably good for now. Maybe swap and whistle or yeah, that's gonna see you. Okay, that'll work. That will work, okay. Um, as far as defense goes, you know, get Korchinski and Vlasic minutes. Both of them are gonna be good. Uh, wow, Korchinski does not want to play top minutes um oh well, actually no you know what he's balanced balanced yeah okay that's not bad because we got pinch and cycle if he's balanced balanced that's fine um 
you got so many other guys like scratched and not playing that are good players so maybe we throw tyler johnston down a line or two and then swap dickinson out for blackwell yeah okay okay that's looking that's actually not horrendous um okay I, I actually do not mind how this Chicago team looks in spite of how bad they are going to be in this first season. Um, so yeah, that's not a horrible starting lineup here for this team. It could be a lot worse. I mean, obviously it's the worst in the NHL, but that, that's, a, that's just a given. So um, let's just simulate ahead here a little ways, see how the rest of preseason goes. And then after that, we will kind of lock it up to another scouting report right here on like October 10th, 11th, somewhere around there. Um, but yeah, it should be a fun time. And there's that other Saarinen guy. I got to do one more scouting report here. I forgot that we were missing him. Holy Corey Perry. Oh, that is unfortunate. I mean, it's preseason, to be fair. It is preseason, but um, my goodness, Corey Perry just goes off in preseason. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to score a ton because why not? That's crazy. Okay. Um, so we'll get this other Liga Scout Saarinen um, going on a bunch of the other scouting reports here because we only got up to like about, yeah, about exactly there. So every now and then you'll find a couple of elite prospects in here that you definitely want to scout. And, you know, we get up to 196. That's pretty good because that's about where our last, like our seventh round pick is going to fall. So perfect, um, let's keep going. All right, so at this point, I think Corey Perry is the favorite to lead the team in points. Um, and we go three and four in preseason. Okay, not actually as bad as I thought we were gonna be. Connor Bedard, freaking 11 points in seven preseason games, not a bad start at all. Hopefully that continues to roll on um, over to the next series of games to start off the regular season but yeah we'll get like one game into the regular season here against pittsburgh to see how it goes i think it was right around i'll have to look it up i don't actually remember exactly which date the Corey perry uh would have been like november okay so like third week of november here is where we'll just terminate Corey Perry's contract unfortunately so um yeah that is the goal that is sticking to the what I'm calling canon events for um for the Blackhawks here and oh really Bedard's uh, I mean yeah Bedard will be a leader eventually we just got to give him a little more time but it should be fun time to do more scouting again because this is again this is the off-camera stuff that actually makes this series work you guys will start to see once all the scouting reports finally come through it's tedious it's boring and it's what's going to make the chicago team a future dynasty so yeah um enjoy sitting back and watching me spam buttons i guess i mean i'm gonna cut most of it out but yay <laughs> All right, there is round two of scouting done, meaning that we can actually get into some season simulation now. This is actually what I'm gonna highlight because otherwise there's not really a whole lot to this episode. So let's go and just finish off the month of October. Actually, first things first, I am going to save my scouting because the scouting, like I've had this game just crash on me so many times before that we're just gonna do that because I would prefer not to lose all of the button spamming that I just had to do. So let's go down to November 1st, see how we do. All right, starting off one and one, we beat the Bruins and then we beat the Canadians in OT. That was, uh, I mean, kind of makes sense, but then we continue to roll being three and one to start the season, make it three and two as Colorado just destroys us. And then Vegas beats us in one goal game. Boston gets their revenge. And oh my lord. Okay, that was, um, I'm realizing now. Hold on. I'm realizing now sometimes the contracts do not work in this game. So I just want to make sure that we actually have all of our players in the system. That's not great. That's not great. I'm going to have to reset that. <sighs> Shit. Mm 
No, oh, man. I just... Th this is one of the problems with NHL, is that when you put players into the game, if you don't set it up perfectly... Wait, what? Okay, no, he is... Okay, hold on, what's going on? What is going on? Um... Okay, no, never mind. Okay. Whew, I scared myself for a second there. Um, the, the game has a tendency to not sign your players even when you assign a contract amount to them and everything. Sometimes it just doesn't let you... Um, the game sometimes just won't let these players sign with your team automatically. Like, sometimes you have to go back in and re-sign them just to make sure they end up on your team. Like, it's a really frustrating process, but it does happen sometimes. So, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't lose a whole bunch of our prospects to free agency randomly like, like it does sometimes. So, yeah, it looks good, actually. Like, I don't think we're going to have any issues there. Lucas Reichel is wanting a contract extension. We're just going to leave that for now. We will be signing him little bit further on in the game here but our first month we're three and four so not actually or I guess we're four and four heading into this game against Arizona which I believe in real life was actually a huge blowout and said we win five four so we're five and four to start the season here definitely a different timeline than we've seen um the Blue Jackets are horrendous. The Flyers are pretty bad. The LA Kings are somehow one seven and one to start the season. Don't ask me how. Like, I, I cannot tell you how LA is that bad, but they are. So, yeah, I mean, if the Kings want to Kings wanna do a little business here with the Blackhawks, we'll uh, send them a salary retained defenseman or something if they, they think that's what they need to, to get things moving in the right direction. They've only won one game somehow. Do not ask me how, but... We would be overpaying for their pick, too, if we do that. So that's probably not the move just yet. On the other hand, um, let's see. What other teams would actually be worth pursuing a pick for? I find the Kraken can usually be a fairly high-end pick here. Um, Canadians and Senators are options, yeah. And in our own division, usually it, it should be the Blackhawks doing horrible, but somehow we're off to a banging start here with a 5-4 and four record. So let's uh, continue on with this a bit of a strange start to the season. Uh, we'll simulate another two weeks in where i got to do more scouting, but there we go. Now we're 5-6 and six and trending back towards the bottom of the league where we belong currently. And all right, five, seven, and one heading into our second round of scouting. Looks a little more accurate. No team below eight points now as the Kings and Jets are somehow hilariously two of the worst teams in the league, even though in real life they're two of the best teams this season. So, holy bedsy. Oh my god. Okay, guys, you can see this firsthand. I'm not playing games. Connor Bedard has 16 points in 13 games to start off his rookie year. How about his, what is his shooting percentage? 16.9%. That's pretty insane. Um, yeah, okay. This is, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. That's the only way I can explain this. Um, Bedsy's going to be good. Man, I'm so excited for that. Holy Kurchinski just jumped two overall. That's nice. Noise. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd probably get copyrighted if I played that actual clip because gotta love YouTube. But yeah, not a bad start here. Where are we actually sitting standings wise right now? That is the thing I always like to see. Also, where are the Tampa Bay Lightning sitting? Because that is another team that we need to keep an eye on. Hey, 20th. Not bad. Not bad. All right, we're sitting 25th, so we're eighth best odds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. Okay, not bad. We do have two more games to potentially lose here, too. Um, like, we got two games in hand on a lot of these teams below us. So, unlikely that we stay 25th, but you never know. So, um, again, gonna save. I, I'm holding this down. I like 
what direction we're trending as far as being towards the bottom of the league. We don't want like a 15th overall pick or something with our own Chicago pick because the Blackhawks are not supposed to be good first year here. And they're not supposed to be good first three years in my opinion, but we'll see what happens here. Got to do more scouting and this time we roll into the skills assessment portion of the scouting. Yay. Okay, so all these skills assessments are done now, uh, which is dead because it takes freaking forever to do scouting, but that is okay. And yeah, essentially the goal is to get through the whole first season, see where our kind of scouting reports end up. And yeah, that's that's the goal for episode one here. So we're going to go all the way up to, let's finish off the month of December here, see how we do. And hopefully it goes well. Okay, good. We're losing games and we win two. Okay. Make it three, four game winning streak, five game winning streak. Okay. And we finally lose one there, but we literally are 11 and 10 now. Okay. How the Lightning doing? Lightning are doing worse than the Blackhawks. Oh my god, this game, dude. I don't understand this game. Connor Bedard's got 25 points in 21 games. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> somehow he's still only 83 rated. He's going to jump up to like a 90. Just like pretty much immediately. That's, that's going to be what happens. He's going to be at least like 87, 88 rated. And, all right, Oliver Moore's not scoring. What's going on down there in Rockford? Um, that's not okay. Yeah, Oliver Moore should be playing first or second line minutes. I agree on that. But where is it? Why, why is there no scoring? Why is he not scoring? Like, I don't understand that. So why is Brandon Baddock playing over Colton Doc? That also makes no sense. Trying to grow our prospect pool here, guys, not shut it down. Oh boy, okay. And yeah, okay, that'll work, that'll work. Um, is there anybody else with decent potential that should be playing and isn't? Maybe Sorella? Even then, he's only 63 rated, so... Yeah, no, we're doing okay there. I, I have no complaints as to how... How our system's operating currently. Alright, so we will head through the month of December, hopefully lose a few more games, put ourselves back into lottery contention here, and we're 1-1 one and one to continue on, great, okay, make it 1-2, and two. we lose Kurashev to a mild concussion, 1-3, and three. okay, and we lose Pierre Mrazek to an injury, that's not great. We're going to pull Stauber up because I want Camesso to continue to grow without having any negative side effects of being added and dropped and added and dropped and added and dropped because that's how goalies just work in this game. It's so stupid, but that's exactly what happens. Oh my god, we are injury ridden right now. That's always fun. Okay, let's throw this backup unsigned hero in Mitchell Weeks in there. Actually, you know, he's not even that bad, but oh well. All right, and then we continue to win games, even though, yeah, okay, that, that one game that we won was against St. Louis, who is, like, the worst team in the league right now somehow. But Oliver Moore's going to have to pick it up here because Frank Nazer and a bunch of these other guys are looking really good, and Oliver Moore's just not rolling yet, so that's going to be fun. All right, uh, we beat the Kraken 4-1 and then lose to the... Uh, Canucks, which makes sense. I'm going to throw Kurashev in here, because then we get a playmaker with Bedard. We get two playmakers with Bedard, I believe. Um, oh no, Radish is power forward. Okay, that's fine though. And did we beat the Avalanche? Nobody knows. And okay, now we've got to go to roster moves again. I would assume it's because of the goalies. Yeah, that's exactly why. All right. Uh, Set our lines back up. 
guards up to 85. Nice. That's uh, very solid. Lucas Reichel's going to get put back in the lineup here, even though he's potentially still hurt. Yeah, let's get back to edit lines because I did not fill that goaltender spot. I swear to God, if they just like re injure Mrazic, like that happens so often where you sub a goalie in that's like almost healthy but not quite, and then it's just like, ah, he's, he's not good to play yet. It's like. That does happen. Um, okay, so Mrazic's healthy. Does Reichel get injured again? Yeah, he does. Shit. That's not good. That is not good. That's not what we wanted. And we are third in the central. We're really third in the... And we're only seven points ahead of the um, eighth place team. So it's not like it's a crazy huge lead. The central's just apparently dog water. Um, that's what I'm going to say. Dog water. But we're 16, 13, and 7. Like, we're a 16 and 20 record, and we're in a playoff spot right now. No thanks to, or all thanks to, Connor Bedard, who's over a point per game. Oh my lord. Seth Jones actually is also playing really, really well right now. Like, way better than I would have expected. I guess he, when he actually stays healthy, that's also probably a, a good sign. So, yeah. That's where our team's currently sitting. The stats are actually looking pretty good. Kevin Korczynski's like half a point per game. So can't really complain too much about his current performance. But Dart's got 21 goals. That's got to be up there in the NHL, is it not? 21 puts him tied for fourth. Yeah, tied for fourth in league scoring for goal scorers anyways. And he's 18. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, he's nowhere near the top as far as NHL skaters go. But look at this. He is, wow, above and beyond Fantilli, Carlson, Korchinski, all of those other guys. And look at that. We got three very solid players. We got Vlasic, Korchinski, and Bedard all in here just doing their most, like the most that they can to keep this team away from getting a lottery pick, I guess. Like, don't ask me how we're in a playoff spot right now. It makes zero sense to me, but the team's playing well, so I can't really complain about the prospects we currently have. So that is where we are at. Um, I'm surprised this team is doing this well, honestly. So we'll go up to the 14th here, 15th, yeah. January 15th is the date I have set for all my scouting. And we lose a game starting off there. Let's continue to lose. Come on, boys. Oh, my God. We're like 50-50, which is going to keep us in a playoff spot more than likely. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, so we're 19, 16, and 8 for 46 points, which is somehow really good in the NHL. It's, it's not. That is a losing record, but... We are somehow in 15th place. How are we in 15th place and Tampa Bay's in 18th? Oh, God. Oh, God. These picks are not going to be there first year. Oh, no. This is going to be rough. This is going to be a rough start because we're just, like, I thought for sure we were going to be bottom of the league. And we are nowhere near bottom. Oh my lord. Okay. Okay, so as we continue on here now that we're done the next round of scouting, we go all the way up to like May. So we're going to finish off this month of January. And really, we need losses. That is the, the main thing here is we need to just lose games. Sure, score a bunch of them, but lose some games. Because, yes, you can see we, who the gems are, who the players that we should be looking towards drafting are. Um, this Brooks guy actually looks really good. So I think he's probably going to be a player that we're targeting. Apart from that, um, that Kvasha guy might be pretty good. Like, I look for players that I don't recognize in the first draft mostly. Like, obviously, if I know Emil Vinny's going to be an elite goalie, we're going to take a shot at him. But... Apart from that, 
not really looking like there's too many like absolutely fabulous or stunning players here in the first two rounds or so. Um, that Muzzin guy looks okay, nothing special. And again, we don't have any actual scouting reports on these guys yet. We're still waiting to see how they turn out, but like Kim Saarinen looks actually pretty so pretty solid too. So we'll see. I'm sure we'll start to see more gems kind of pop up here as we continue on with the scouting, but come on boys, just keep on keep on keeping on losing. That's what we need. Do I need to like fuck up the line chemistry or something here? What what is it gonna take to lose games with this team? Gonna take throwing Lucas Reichel up on the top line and being like, okay, deal with it. Like we need need to swap things up. Oh shoot, I'm also realizing now. This is totally on me. Okay, my bad guys, hold on. I'm totally realizing now we did not scratch Corey Perry and it's like January, so we are going to go. I don't even know if we can buy a load. We should be able to, but I don't know if we can. Where is he? I don't think there's any way to terminate his contract. Okay. Well, you know what we'll do instead is we'll trade him for a low-end pick. Um, because better than nothing, but also the only way we can deal with this right now. So let's see, who wants Corey Perry? Seven teams, Boston, third rounders? Oh my goodness. You wanna offer me a third rounder next year? I'm gonna take it. Let's send him to, let's see. Um, you know what, Boston had the whole Lucic saga. Um, so they, they're used to having players that are questionable on team misconduct sometimes. So let's do that. Completed the Corey Perry move. Uh, we need to lose some games though because currently we are sitting way too high for my liking. 11th point, 11 points ahead of the St. Louis Blues for last place in the division. That's not good enough. And there we go. We got another point. Lovely. Okay. So, okay. That's one month. We're 54 points in 50. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're going to end up with more than 82 points probably. So let's continue on here. And we beat the Wild, okay, that was kind of expected. Um, but beating the Rangers shouldn't happen, beating the Canucks, okay. There we go, there we go, all right, lose three games in a row and then win three games in a row, of course. And it's GM Nigel time. Sorry? Is Nigel with you? Yeah. Oh, all right, GM Nigel. What's what's going on here with the Blackhawks? What do we gotta do? Hey, there he is, Mr. Nigel. How you doing? Oh, he's a squirmy worm today. What do we gotta do with this team? Hey, what's that? They gotta lose more games? Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's uh, I don't know why they they think they can be something they're not right now. Like, there's no way this team is a playoff team, and somehow we're sitting in a wild card spot right now ahead of teams like Arizona and Minnesota and St. Louis. Like, come on, man. <sighs> this is frustrating because we all know the team shouldn't be this good. And they, they're somehow winning, so great. All right, so taking a peek at the draft class here. We actually have a couple players that have potentials on them now, which is always exciting. So yeah, Emil Vinny, definitely going to be a goaltender we are looking to acquire. Um, let's see who else is usually good. Consta Hellenius would not be a bad pickup in the later rounds, potentially. And then apart from that, no other real like elite, elite kind of talents yet, but that's okay. And starting in, unfortunately, is a fringe starter, so that's not spectacular. Look at how many bottom forwards there. Oh my god. All right, so this is a below average draft class for sure. All right, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, everything outside of like the fourth round is not gonna be worth picking this year probably, so 
Yep. That's where we're currently at. All right, let's see. Let's go up to the trade deadline, see if we can make a big move that sends somebody away. Because I don't want this team qualifying for the playoffs first season. That just defeats the purpose of our entire team. Sure, Bedard's looking great. He's developed Wheels and Schnipe on top of his current X-Factors that he already had. Um, so yeah, he's going to be a force of nature here in no time at all. Are we really not playing Korchinski right now? Are, are you serious? Oh man. Don't even. Oh, this game, dude. This game. <laughs> Let's not play an 83 rated elite defenseman on our team. Why would we do that? Right? That that just ah, that's just counterintuitive. <laughs> oh man. Drew Camesso's looking alright. He's up to a 78, so he's probably gonna be in the goalposts within a season or two. And the game is glitched out, because it always does. The Tampa Bay Lightning have fired their coach. Oh my god, Tampa Bay's only got 59 points. <laughs> Watch the Tampa pick turn out to be something, like, good. And that's it for Nigel today. Bye, Nigel. Okay, um, ticket drives. The team's doing way better than everybody anticipated and would have ever expected. And we are going to hit the trade deadline here. So you know what? Let's go. Let's trade away even more players somehow. Um, I mean, we'll test a Jones trade. Nothing there. Is there anybody even like remotely interested in Seth Jones? Because that could be... Ho -ho. Ho -ho. Hello. Double hello. We could get Carolina's first for Hall. That would be good. Um... We could get Spencer Knight. We wouldn't even have to worry about drafting an elite goalie. Okay, so we've got some serious trades on the table here, and it's going to be tough to make the right call because there's there's a couple options here. Like, Swayman's not bad. Swayman's a great option in exchange for Taylor Hall. Fourth and a fifth, not great, but we could get a first and a second in the next two drafts. And we get Jameson Reese from Carolina. That's not a bad play at all. Um, Zion Nyback is also a very solid player. And then two seconds instead for him. I just want to see what's Nyback's rating. Because if he's only like 66 rated. Oh, Asset's no longer on the team. Lovely. So tell me that Carolina trade's not even available. Because they just like offered it and then immediately swept it out under the rug. Yeah, it was the one second. Okay, that's fine. Um, Spencer Knight, fabulous option potentially in net. We wouldn't even have to worry about drafting and developing a goalie at that point then. Only thing is he's already 22 years old and he's going to be a big chunk of money coming up. So I don't think we're going to do that. What was the trade? Declare got moved. Okay, so we're not going to do that one. I do think I want to go for the first round picks because I think we can make the first round picks count especially in this draft coming up here. Um, and I really do think that is going to be the move out of these five. So let's do it. Carolina is going to be getting Taylor Hall for two seasons in exchange for this year's first, next year's second, and Jameson Reese. And let's just see. How good is Jameson Reese? Is he a potential NHL player eventually? I would assume with high top nine potential he is. 73 overall, okay, so nothing crazy there, but he could potentially be our bottom line center in the future. So let's go with that. Fabulous trade, Carolina overpays for Taylor Hall, and that's exactly what we like to see. So next things next, um, sorry, Connor Bedard, but we are like fully just committing to not building a team around you here. Who wants Seth Jones? Anaheim Ducks, potentially. Um, anybody else? Hurricanes, of course. Columbus Blue Jackets want him back. That could be uh, that could be a bittersweet reunion. Odds we go back and get Adam Boakfast in exchange. Just like reverse the trade altogether. Be like, hey, give us Boakfast back and we'll call it a deal. Like, uh, is he even here anymore? Or did they? They must have traded Boakfast. Huh. Can't say that's something I ever expected, but okay. Well, 
Okay. Um, so I guess Columbus isn't going to be the team unless they want to trade us our their first round pick. We're gonna we're stockpiling the first round picks this year. But let's see. What does Columbus think? Is Columbus looking at this going? Oh yeah, let's commit a first round pick here. They would have too many skaters, even though the cap space actually works out quite nicely. Um, who's just a massive contract on this team that's not worth the money? Eric Goodbranson, yeah, four mil, okay. We could do that. Be over the max salary cap next year, of course. Who else? Um, Rosovic to one year, so that doesn't work. Joel Armia, yeah, okay, that, that could work. Any chance they want to sauce us two first round picks? This? You know what? You know what? This might actually go through. Let's try this. Okay, let's try it. This is a massive money deal. Lots of money switching hands, seven and a half million coming to Chicago in exchange for the two million difference of Seth Jones and two first round picks to the Blackhawks. Does it go? Oh my God, Columbus, you're stupid. You're stupid. All right, so that's all we're doing for the trade deadline. We got three first round picks over the next two years. <sighs> Those are big deals. Those were big name deals. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So this Blackhawks team should absolutely be tanking it. The morale's going down without question. D like we better, we better continue to lose games here, or not, or we just beat like some of the best teams in the league in the Ducks, who's got seventy-three. I, I guess we're better than the Ducks. We're a better team than the Anaheim Ducks right now, which makes zero sense. But thank you very much for that game. Um, Yes, I, I don't appreciate it. I don't know what's going on here with this team. Dude, we gotta stop winning games. There's no way we're continuing to win games here. We have so many first round picks this year. It's hilarious, I love it. I don't think, I mean, there's a slim chance the lightning pick wins the lottery, but like there is such a high chance that none of these picks turn out to be anything good. <laughs> okay, let's just keep winning games, I guess. When was Peter Mrazek even injured? Nobody knows. We're just guessing here at this point because this game makes no sense because this is the Blackhawks roster we are currently playing with and we are somehow winning games. Oh my god, look at this defense, it's so bad. It's so bad, but it's like, it's almost close to being decent, but it's so bad. Oh my god, dude, I, I can't make sense of this. Like, why is Drew Camasso up in the league? Of course he's gonna lose morale for being sent down, why wouldn't he? Jameson Reese should be sent down too. Ice hogs are horrible this year, oh my god. Okay, can we drop out of a playoff spot, please? This team is not playoff ready, dude. This team is so not playoff ready. Lose games! Oh my god, look at this, we are 36, 23, and 15. Yes, that's a 36 and 35, or sorry, 36 and 38 record total, but we got 15 extra points from where we should be. You take those 15 points off, we are currently sitting with 75 points out of a playoff spot. It's all those freaking OT losses and extra efforts to, oh my god, we're gonna make the playoffs first round, are you? You can't be serious right now. You just, you cannot be serious that we are in a playoff spot. Dude, this team is not, not ready. Not even remotely close to being playoff ready. We are going to get murdered in the first round. And that is the only way I can state that. 
that's it. We're just going to lose badly. Come on, boys. Keep losing. Please keep losing. This team is not not built for the playoffs whatsoever. I love how Bedard's lost two overall since the start of the season. Or since um, the midpoint of the season, he's just like, nah, fuck this. I uh, I do not want to do not want to be winning here just yet. We need we need more pieces. Another loss, another loss. <sighs> I think we still made the playoffs. Somehow our team still managed to make the playoffs. Don't ask me how. Who is the worst team? The <laughs> Lightning missed the playoffs due to what? <laughs> I can't. This game makes no sense. I mean, holy. My god, Connor Bedard, 88 points, masterclass of a rookie season, easily is the best player on the Blackhawks, not even like remotely close. Taylor Radish has a 75 point season, are you kidding me? Oh lord, let me just change my battery pack here real quick. I don't get it. Kit Korczynski, 29 points. Great start to his career, honestly. Like, 30 points as a defenseman, or almost 30 points as a defenseman is great. I'm very happy with that, but... I... Did Bedard just single-handedly lead the Blackhawks into the playoffs? Are you serious right now? This this is not, not good as far as where I want it to be. Bedard's third in goal scoring this season 48 points what did he shoot 15.3 percent oh my god obviously he he's over double what fantilly scores that's insane and oh my lord i just i can't believe we made the playoffs I, I can, it's NHL, anything's possible, but, oh my god. <laughs> 38, 28, and 16. For 92 points, and what are we going to be like, a 16th place finish, yes? 14th, 1-4, the Chicago Blackhawks just immediately are good. Don't ask me how, but somehow we are. I guess I should have traded for an LA or Seattle pick when I had the chance, because I prefaced those two teams in the start of the year. It was like, oh, these teams could be bad. Probably not, but they could be, and then we did that. <sighs> oh, this game. Oh, this game, man. I <sighs> Never fails to surprise me. Like, just never. So apart from that, we also have Carolina's first round pick. Not great. I mean, it'll be a first, but whatever. We've got our first round pick, which is going to be like 17th, 18th, because we're probably gonna just get obliterated in the first round. And then let's see, if we go 32 minus 19. We are currently sitting with the 11th and 13th best odds to win the lottery in the draft with Columbus and Tampa Bay's picks. Peachy, just peachy, I love it. <sighs> so yeah, Bedard beats out McDavid, Caulfield, Sebastian Ajo, Jack Eichel, Nikita Kucherov, all of these other players with 48 goals in his rookie year. It's 
crazy because there's a very good chance it doesn't go up from here with Bedard and the Blackhawks because 48 goals is a pretty unsustainable pace for an 18, 19 year old. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. So by the looks of it, we will probably be taking on the, it's going to be the Colorado Avalanche probably. Um, actually, it might be the Vegas Golden Knights too. So no, it's going to be the Edmonton Oilers. Okay. Sorry. Not Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, it was either Colorado or Edmonton. We get the Edmonton Oilers, and honestly, I, I don't think we stand a chance. But it's NHL. Anything can happen, quite literally, as we have seen. But man, oh man, if we don't lose horribly to this team, I'm actually going to be probably disappointed with our team effort because there's just there's just no way. There's just no way that this team, this Edmonton team, loses to our Chicago team. But then again, we'll see. McDavid had 106 points in the regular season. So let's just get moving here. Let's uh, simulate in a couple games. We're going to do kind of like the sim menu option. We just go click, 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 one, two, three. Um, start off 2 1. No way. We win game one, four, two. I don't want to win. This team is not a winner yet shouldn't be a winner sure we lost 16 games in ot but like we're in edmonton we should not be beating the oilers in edmonton and it's 2-1 again 2-2 two, two. that's a little more like it okay okay at least um okay one and one heading back to chicago okay so yeah our ahl team did absolutely tremendously bad and that is okay because well it's not great like I would have preferred if they had actually won a little bit more because the development's gonna be rough down there um but heading into oh my god how are we <sighs> we're up 2-1 against the Oilers man we are we are up 2-1 against the Oilers. do I need to sit Connor Bedard does that actually need to happen here? Do I, I need to sit Tyler Johnson because he's got four points in three games, apparently. Oh, and there we continue to go. Edmonton. Edmonton's disappointing me, honestly. The fact that we're in a series tied. Oh, wait. No, never mind. We, we lo did lose 4-3. I was looking at the Oilers score. Okay, perfect. We're down 3-1. That's where we should be. Winnipeg might get swept and end up with a higher pick than us, but who cares? Um... And okay, we win that game 5-1, so we stave off elimination. How on earth? How on earth is this team? Like, this is such a joke of a playoffs because we shouldn't be here. Okay, 2-1 game, 3-2 game, 5-3. There we go. Okay, done. Done. We finally lose. Okay, good. <sighs> Dude, this team. I, I just don't. I just don't get it. How, how did we make it? to game six of round one of the playoffs. We should not have at all. <laughs> um, oh, look at this guy. Quinn Keeler. There's going to be a good pick. Goalie of the future, potentially. Very possibly. Um, apart from that, this Brooks guy is definitely an NHL defenseman. He's probably going to be the guy we end up pairing with Kevin Korczynski. That's going to be a pick that we make for sure. Um, okay, look at this guy. Nicholas Stewart. All right, another elite player in there. That's why we do this kind of scouting. And we got one low elite here in Ryder Larson. Okay, not not bad. Could have been significantly worse, honestly, for this draft. Like, I'm actually fairly okay with how things are looking so far here. We could go after Adam Jacko. That wouldn't be horrible. Of course, it's all left wingers past the, like, 50-ish range for top six talents. Oh boy, okay. Um, how about top four D-men? Anything good? Yakumchuk's kind of the last one. Yeah. One started there in Kirsch, okay. And then tons of top nine talent. Again, all on the wing, pretty much. Okay, so there's options. There's definitely options for us to pick from here. Um, nothing overly tremendous or special but like there, there's some talent there's definitely some talent that we'll be able to utilize and take advantage of with the sheer amount of picks we have but uh let's simulate up to i believe it's may 16th or 17th somewhere in there let's go to the uh, 16th just simulate onwards 
get knocked out in round one. We'll keep track of the playoffs here afterwards, but looks like the Oilers and Canucks are going to seven. That's fun. Um, but I think that's it for scouting now. Like now all we really got to do is just finish scouting these last few players that I actually want to go through and kind of pick out. So that's the sign scouts again. Great. Okay. I guess we'll do it this way. Perfect. Right up to June 22nd. Okay. So that is our final set of scouting reports. Um, some guys aren't doing scouting because like regions are just fully scouted, but yeah, um, we're just going to go right up to pretty much draft day now at this point with the simulation and we will lay out our picks and then conclude the episode there and start the draft in the next one. So um, yeah, okay, let's go up to like the 18th, 19th, somewhere in there. The playoffs should, that was not right. The playoffs should resume or um, should complete here pretty soon. I'm interested as to who makes the finals. It's the Abs and Hurricanes. Great. So the Hurricanes pick this year is going to be like 31st, 32nd maybe. And coaching really, our coach, won, oh my god, our coach won the Jack Adams. That's that's pretty pathetic. Oh dear lord. Okay. Okay. So as far as NHL awards go this year, Matthews won the Art Ross. Nylander won the Hart. Makar won the Norris, Johnny Goudreau won the Lady Bing, of course Connor Bedard won the Calder, uh, Nathan McKinnon won the Conn Smythe, Freddie Anderson won the Vesna, Georgiev and Fransuz won the, uh, the Jennings, uh, Colton Pareko won the Masterton, our coach Gallardi, or Galliardi, sorry, won the um, Jack Adams, don't ask me how, Ryan, Ryan O'Reilly won the Selkie, and Nylander won the Lindsay, and of course Ovechkin won the Rocket. All right, so that is pretty much where we're gonna wrap up this series, or this series, this episode. We're not done after series one. We might as well, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Dude, I did not click in and register that the lottery was about to drop. And we just won the number two pick from the number 12. We just saw St. Louis, and Chicago jump 10 picks a piece. So Seattle and LA, goodbye. You can just get screwed over because that just happened. Um, oh my God, we just won. Dude, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter. We just won the number two pick. <sighs> Not only that, we also got 14th best odds there, 14th best pick with um, Columbus's pick, so that is sweet, but oh my god, the draft lottery cheese, man. The, I feel so bad for all of the teams below us that just got sewered by that, but St. Louis is going to get Macklin Celebrini most likely. That's absolutely hilarious, because there is no way we deserve that pick. Now imagine if that was Tampa Bay's pick, not Chicago's. Like, oh my lord. <sighs> this game, man, this game just never, never fails to surprise me. Never mind the fact that the Brandon Hagel trade just got us, essentially, it's Cole Iserman. Like, that is, that is what we're looking at here, more than likely, with the number two pick, is Cole Iserman. I would love if Celebrini somehow fell to our team, but you know what? With this setup and this occasion, this now means that Cole Iserman is going to be our second line driver of play more than likely because we have playmakers that we can put around him to turn turn those guys into just amazing players, and then we still have the opportunity at pick. Oh, 14 is going to be tight for actually getting Brooks. We might have to trade up one or two picks to actually land Brooks here because I think that might be the only way that this actually plays out properly. The only other thing I could see is maybe we try trading up to get Celebrini because Celebrini is a better fit for the Chicago team than Gold Iserman, but that's really about all I can think of for what moves we might see at the draft here. I mean, I want to know what you guys think. I think personally we should trade up one spot or two spots 
um, with pick 14 here to get Brooks because I think Corey Brooks is a player we need to actually need to actually acquire here. Um, yes, he's a computer generated player, but if he plays like Al McInnes, he's a pinch and cycle fit that's going to fit alongside Korchinski. We absolutely need that. Um, as far as Iserman or Celebrini goes, what do you guys think? Which player should we be actually looking at? Should it be just take Iserman, cover that number two um, sniper second line kind of player that I was looking at to, you know, solidify that one, one of our needs or what, what do we do? Like, I, I need to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on this in the comments below because of where our picks are going to land and where they're going to end up. I don't think we're getting a, a like, two right-handed D in this draft. I don't think Lev Chanel is going to fall to us, which is fine. Um, but Corey Brooks is a guy that we probably need to go out and acquire here. So that is my main thoughts for this section, this portion of the video. But I want you guys to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below because there are players that, yes, we need to draft. There are players that I think are vital to this team's success in the future, and I don't think it's necessarily a guy like Kenneth Muzzin. I think it's more so a guy like Quinn Keeler. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm really excited for this upcoming draft. I think we do have a lot of talent that we can pick and choose from here. Overall, I think there's lots of options in the first four to five rounds, and then once we get past that, it kind of drops off because that's that's just simply how this game goes. So yeah, what do you guys think though? What do you think we need to do for moves? I think we pretty much have most of our draft picks kind of laid out already, but let me know if there's a specific trade or move or setup that you want to see from this upcoming draft because 2024 is going to be a big draft here for the Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, the fact that we just landed the number two pick with the 12th best odds is is rich, honestly. Like, it's so funny that that happened. So, yeah, um, the fact that we're probably going to pull two high elites into this team just... It, it doesn't blow my mind, but I look at it and just go, oh, I feel so bad for the other teams that probably needed the elite players more than we did. Um, but no, we, we need them pretty badly here in Chicago right now too. So that is pretty much where we're going to wrap this one up. If you guys have enjoyed watching this first season of just a roller coaster of emotions then go down below drop a like subscribe and hit notifications of course leave comments and i will feature them in the next episode because that's how we're gonna have to set this series up is you guys comment based on the last episode i feature in the next one and that drives the um the features and events that occur in the episode following so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really excited for this rebuilding kind of series here in Chicago, and we're off to a banging start here, I gotta say. So that is pretty much it for this one. We'll just kind of look over the retired players, and then we'll finish it off. So for retired players, we see Shea Weber, Brian Little, Brent Seabrook, and a few other names that retire. I wish, again, this has to be a future eventually is retiring player numbers. Um, I would love to see that, but right now, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of guys from the Blackhawks organization retire there apart from Brent Seabrook, and that would be number seven that we would just not be touching there because, again, of course, he won a cup with the Blackhawks or a couple cups with the Blackhawks. I think it was at least two or three. Um, but, yeah, that is where we are going to call it. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, this video and do all that good stuff down below in the comments. Drop a like, subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.